Hello everyone and welcome! Today I'm very excited to resume my video cadence by kicking off the year with a new XR video series that covers all the new AI building blocks available in Meta SDKs V83 and later. We'll dive into how you can leverage features like object detection, large language models, speech to text, and also text to speech. All right, let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right, guys, so we're gonna start by creating a new project, use Universal 3D. Also give your project a name. I'm gonna name it AI Building Blocks Demos. That way it makes a lot of sense to me. And then just put it in your preferred path. Now we're gonna go into the package manager and then here you're going to be installing Meta MR Utility Kit. This is going to give us access to the pass-through camera access components and also has a dependency on core, which is what's gonna give us building blocks. Also, this welcome screen is pretty cool. I recommend you to look at to look at it because it's gonna tell you, okay, what steps do you need to be able to start developing with the Meta SDK tools. So once you're done, let's go into the project setup tool. And this is also really great. We'll look at it in a minute. Before that, let's go ahead and switch the platform to be Meta Quest. This used to be Android, now we are offering MetaQuest. It has some better performance and, and settings basically for your project. Then I'm gonna rename the scene to be AI Building Blocks. And then I think I call it AI Building Blocks on Device. Then go into the Project Setup tool, make sure you fix everything. Now, if we go into Building Blocks, you're gonna see that we have AI capabilities, which is really cool. This gives you access to object detection, LLMs, and so on at the pass-through building block. That way we can see the real world as we're testing some of these tools. Otherwise, it's gonna be very difficult to see it, especially with object detection, where we're gonna be scanning real world objects. This is the first building block that I want to cover in this video series. You have object detection. It works with the cloud. It works with on device. The cloud is gonna be using, for now, Hugging Face, and then on device is gonna be using Unity Sentis. So Unity Sentis was basically renamed to Inference, and that's the component, the package, that we need to install. Just make sure that you install it. I'm gonna give it a name here under Packages, and then the version that I recommend using is 2.2.1. That that's the version that I ended up testing with, and then, and then just make sure that you disable the debugging tools. I don't need that for now, but if you wanna use it, you can. Then go back into the Project Setup tool. You're gonna to see that it's gonna require that we install a new package, and that's gonna be the Unity OpenXR Meta. This has additional components that will work with OpenXR and Meta. Specifically, depth is what we need. Then go into the standalone version and make sure that you enable Meta XR Feature Group. I'm gonna do the same thing with the Quest and Android. Then if you go under OpenXR, you can look and see what features are enabled. You're gonna see occlusion, which is what we need, session, and now some other components that you just saw on that screen. Now go ahead and connect your Quest 3 device via USB-C, and then let's make sure that we deploy it. As soon as you open it up on your Quest device, you're gonna see a couple of pop-ups. Just make sure that you enable those permissions. They're gonna be required in order for us to read information from the surroundings and also access to the pass-through camera. So you can see here is labeling everything in my office. Here we have the teddy bear with the number on the right, which is basically the confidence of how much the algorithm thinks that this is a teddy bear, which it is, is a very high number. I think I have it set to 0.5. It has to be 50% or more in order for that to be recognized. You can see keyboard, TV monitors, the plan, and then yeah, object detection is working fine. So. There's one issue with object detection as of V83 and the script that I have on this GitHub repo, which I'm gonna be linking here below, which is called the Object Detection Visualizer V2. Just make sure that you download that and copy and paste it. And then you can use this project as a, basically as a reference point. It has some fixes that you're gonna need basically for the bounding boxes to align correctly. So now if you go back into the scene and look at the object detection, this is how the component looks like. It has a dependency to the pass-through camera access component. It also has what's called a provider. In this case, it's gonna be a provider that works with Unity Sentis. It's called Unity Inference, but it allows you to basically use the same agent with multiple providers, which is basically one of the architectures of AI building blocks is that you can have multiple providers for one agent. In this case, for the object detection, right now we can use either Sentis or we can use Hugging Face, but you can extend it if you want and add more providers. 
Then the object detection agent, this is the one that I just mentioned, has a method that allows you to receive the bounding boxes that are available. This is the prefab that gets instantiated when one of the classifiers appears in the scene or in the real world. And you can also see here that we have environment depth manager that's gonna be needed for this component as well, and also the depth texture access. So this right here, what I wanted to show you, if you install the Android Logcat, you can also look at the logs on the MetaQuest developer hub to be able to give you this. And I like this because it's all integrated into Unity. I can search for keyboard, which is what was detected. And then the information that the bounding boxes are sending you back. You can see the position, you can see the score. So this is gonna be very good information if you wanted to do something else with the information that was sent back to you from Unity Scientist or from Hugging Face, which is what we're looking at right now. So in the Hugging Face portal, just make sure that you create a brand new token. I already created one, but if you wanted to create one from scratch, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete it. So you can see what you need to do, just create an account, go into this area, and you can be very granular of what the token is going to have access to. I want access to basically everything as read access, so I'm just gonna create, I'm just gonna give it a read access, and then just copy and put it in a secure location. So now that we have these though, is what kind of models do we need, right? There's probably thousands of models available here in Hugging Face for object detection, for segmentation, and so on. The one that we're gonna be using is from Facebook, and this basically gives you information about objects that are on a picture. So if you have a picture where we have a bike, we have a human, it's going to try to classify the bike, classify the human, depending on where it is. This right here, which is the inference providers for Facebook, shows you that you can basically communicate with Python, you can use JavaScript, or you can basically use a curl command by using the terminal, which is what I'm gonna show you how to use. So what I have in here, I'm gonna go into the terminal and I open VS Code because I wanna show you a couple of pictures that I basically downloaded. You can download any of them, but in this case, I wanted to bring a cat with a plant and a couch and also an environment, an outdoor environment that could give me also a lot more information about the surroundings. So what I'm gonna do is let's go into that terminal here and remember that command that we had that was called curl? Well, we're gonna be basically bringing that into the terminal here so that we can do a, basically a call to Hugging Face and get that information back. We're gonna be setting the token first, which is going to use these environment variables. Just make sure that you set it. And you can also use Postman if you wanted to do that, to do this, I wanted to keep it simple. But you can see that here we have a post request, I'm gonna try it. And it's gonna fail because we're missing one component and that's gonna be the, the right path for the images. So I went into my images directory and now it's correct. And you can see that JSON data that was sent back. So it's really hard to see the JSON data here. So I'm gonna show you a plugin here that I use, which is pretty JSON. So it's actually called an extension in VS Code. But you know what I mean when I, when I said that. So I'm gonna paste that in here and save these first as JSON so that we can have the right color coding. And then I'm gonna basically convert it to JSON here by pulling my commands. And you can see here that we get the score, we have the labels, and we also got the location of each bounding box. In this case, it detected a person, the bicycle, also the car, and it has the score or the prediction that the agent is actually calculating. You can see the same thing happened here with the cat. It detected the it detected a banana on the couch, which is incorrect. Uh, but you can see that some of these models are not perfect, but it gives you enough information for you to make sense of your environment. So now what I'm gonna do though is we have these scene currently working specifically for the on-device model. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new provider and I'm gonna select Hugging Face this time. This is going to be cool because now this provider is basically pointing at a different object in C-sharp and he knows how to communicate with Hugging Face. So all I have to do is basically provide it with the information. In this case, I need an API key, I need an endpoint, and I also need a model ID. So all I had to do is basically create that scriptable object and then assign it to my object detection game object. And now we have, and this, actually doesn't look much different because it is the same agent that is running except that it's calling a different provider. The way that you can notice that it's different is because it's actually detecting other items that the other implementation didn't detect. 
One of the examples here is gonna be a book that you can see that it got detected. That didn't work quite well with Centis. Make sure that you keep track of the usage. I have 438 different requests of inference usage or prediction usage. You can also look at additional analytics here on the inference just to determine what models I'm using. You can see three minutes ago, I used this model and it's really cool because it shows you, you know, how many requests per day, what the cost is each day. I think this is a really cool tool to help you understand how your models are behaving or how many requests you're using on your applications, depending on how many users you have. So now what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna show you that we can also get metrics from these objects. Basically the agent, it's exposing different actions and we're gonna be binding to those actions. So in this case, I need to know what the bounding boxes are gonna be and the information that is detecting. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna basically bind to the unboxes update it. And once I do that, I'm logging the information. You can see here, if I go back to Android Loca, now I can see object detected, what the time was, what the elapsed time was, and also some of the additional metadata that I'm reading. So now on the next video, I'm gonna show you how the LLM works, which is the large language model. This is gonna be able to communicate via cloud if you wanted to get information from Llama API or from OpenAI, or if you wanted to run on device or maybe on a local server, this component is going to allow you to do that. Well, AI building blocks to me are going to be a huge resource going forward for XR applications. And today we just barely scratched the surface of what can be done with the object detection building block. In the next video, we're going to be taking a deeper look at how the large language model building block can help you build applications that basically understand text, images, and video, turning your XR spaces into intelligent environments. For now, consider subscribing to the channel to be one of the first ones to get notified when the next video drops. If you have any questions or general comments, let me know below. And as always, thank you very much for watching everyone and happy XR coding.